Hi, this is Brian Forster, and look very carefully at the wall in the background. You see holes cut into the bedrock. Now we're in Cappadocia, which is in central Anatolia in Turkey, and I was simply blown away by the number of these chambers carved into the bedrock. The material is actually quite soft. Most of it is volcanic ash. And so it's not a question of using high technology to cut these chambers, but it's the sheer volume of them. Not simply in this location, but in many locations. We drove for hours and hours and kept encountering these. Absolutely astonishing. Now, in most accounts, it's believed that this was done by early Christians who were fleeing persecution in other countries. And so they, most of them came to Turkey in order to escape being persecuted. But I get the gut feeling that these are thousands of years older than we've been taught and that the Christians simply utilized them because they were already there. There are also a number of these that were turned into churches, such as this one, called the Yil Anli Church. And we're actually going to go inside. Once again, the stone workmanship is relatively crude and the material is quite soft. But they're, actually, they're absolutely beautiful in terms of the paintings and frescoes left behind by the early Christians. And this is a little side valley that we walked through for about an hour. And it was mainly on the western side, which is the right side, that we find these churches and other chambers cut into this soft bedrock. Again, not the difficulty of making them, simply the sheer volume of them was quite incredible. In some cases, there are multiple stories. I'm about to upload soon a, um, a video about one of the underground cities that we went in, in the Cappadocia area. So stay tuned for that. So here we are again in another one of the churches with the paintings on the ceiling of biblical scenes. And here, it looks like some of them are still being utilized, having wooden doors put in them, possibly for storage. So now we've moved to another location. This is one of the major ancient centers where we find these chambers. And again, as we go inside, relatively deep into the bedrock. You can see the tool marks. They don't look like the use of high technology. They look simply like hand chisels to me. But again, the material is very soft. And then here we're going into another one. Different niches used for different purposes. And even a second story in this one. See the darkening of the walls and the ceiling from centuries of fires being lit, probably cooking fires inside. And here another one. Again, you can see the rough tool marks and also the darkening of the ceiling. This being one of the major centers and one of the major tourist centers, of course, there were way too many people, but we simply had to deal with that on this day. Some of the other locations had far fewer visitors. Here's a very long table cut into the bedrock. And then another church. This is called the Dark Church. Why it's called that, I don't know. And I actually didn't really go inside because there were far too many people 
in single file going in and then trying to uh, come back out the single entrance exit. And then another location. If you look very carefully, once again, you can see the chambers in the background. And then this entire small mountain is riddled with these chambers. Again, the idea that they were solely made by uh, Christians fleeing persecution early in uh, Christendom is highly unlikely, but they were obviously occupied by the Christians and other people. Turkey has thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of human habitation, so who knows how old these actually are. This is a short slideshow of an upcoming longer video presentation about Hattusha located in Turkey. And here we see lots of examples of possible lost ancient high technology. Look at those even depressions in this large limestone block. And when you look up at a close-up, you see that the depression is very even and has a slight arc to it. And then on the other side, the same thing. And look at the rubble construction just to the left of it. So we're looking at two ages of construction at Hattusha. And also here, at the outer gate, the same depressions that are quite even. And also drill holes. We didn't see two, we saw between 50 and 100 drill holes, and we didn't even cover the entire site on that visit. There's also a long tunnel that was built during the time of the Hittites, large stones, but rough construction. And at the very end, again, a precision drill hole where the hinge would have been. And on the other side as well. So the doors, we don't know what the doors were made of. The doors were made to um, move in towards the tunnel. Also this giant limestone tub. With holes at either end, obviously for drainage. As well, there were a number of these large megalithic blocks with drill holes in them, probably made to connect one to the other. And again, look at the precision of that drill hole. It's in limestone, which isn't really that hard, but it's metamorphosed limestone, so it's harder than normal limestone. and also circular saw marks in granite. The granite actually comes from hundreds of miles away, and the diameter was between six and eight feet. This is another view of that circular saw mark. And again, the idea that these are modern is very highly unlikely. We also saw evidence of flat saw marks as well in the same location in the granite. And also lots and lots of megalithic ancient walls with no mortar in between the stones. These weigh several tons apiece, could be from a local quarry, but they're quite massive. And as you can see, they fit together very tightly with no mortar whatsoever. So upcoming will be a longer video version of our discoveries at Hattusha in Turkey. There was also this large block of nephrite, and no one was able to tell us its origin source. Also, large slabs in the floor, such as this one. 